As we approach the fifth year of the pandemia, it has fallen upon me to deliver to you the three-minute explanatory apologia to the four-decade-long serial Chang and Avoid Moon, a guide for the perplexed. I am perhaps the most perplexed. There is no way into this story, but there is no way out of it either. So I was just coming down off a great plastic surgery high when I suddenly woke up in the middle of the yearly vote by all the characters to kill off the character of Chang. But they know that in this story, you can be killed countless times but never die. They hope desperately, year after year, for the courage to break the spell. But we're all too greedy here for anything near courage. So anyway, I am Picablo. I have changed my name and dyed my hair yellow to escape the plague that is Chang. I have had several face jobs, and I look nothing like the original Picablo you all remember so well. I'll start by giving the traditional invocation. Strange, beautiful grass of green with your majestic silver seas, your mysterious mountains I wish to see closer. May I land my kinky machine? Although your world wonders me with its majestic and superior cackling hen, your people I do not understand. So to you I will put an end, and you will never hear surf music again. Okay, so that's done. And yeah, the Salvatore Munde look. 48 months of lockdown. Get over it. You, of course, can see that I am currently holed up inside the dusty rotunda of our family's turgid and inexact replica of the Pantheon. It's the last structure left on our devastated island chain of Estados Escondidos. As you can see, the dome has been poorly repaired hideously redecorated. The last time you may have seen it was at the very moment of its collapse during the Elf War in 1988. I seem to be alone in here, but I sense the Infanta is lurking about. Who is the Infanta, you ask? Okay, let's start there. She was adopted by my grandmother, the Contessa Isabella, after she heard her singing in the streets of Rio de Janeiro. The Infanta's age is unknown. She could be seven, she could be 40. We can see and hear her, but of course, traditionally, you, the audience, cannot, whatever. The Contessa, as most of you may not know, wrote the song Ventura Highway for the Eagles. Oh no, I mean the group America, America. She wrote Desperado for the Eagles, yes? Yes, she did. Okay, so uh, let's move on. I'm running out of time, so I'll skip ahead. Okay, I'll give a few highlights. In 1946, Chang married the Contessa in Saigon. He tried to kill her five times. They were divorced a year later. In 1938, in the Philippines, Chang ambushed a car carrying the Contessa's parents, killing the Contessa's father, Octavio. He blamed it on a disaffected group of peasants. Uh, by the way, Chang has diplomatic immunity in at least 50 countries. What else? OK, OK, I'll skip ahead, way ahead. Here's episode number 56. Chang, Fangitu, Almondine, and my mother, Svetlana, arrive in New York for the 2004 Republican Convention. The character of uh, Dr. Sabartes is stuck in Fallujah selling rocket launchers and misses the convention. Chang is snubbed by Mr. Rumsfeld. Antonio has an affair with Almondine at the Ritz-Carlton. Chang arranges that Lolita his former wife, be invited to sing at the convention closing ceremony. She sings War Pigs by Black Sabbath. Oh my God, the sun is coming up. Infanta, come on, let's get out of here. Uh, we'll pick up the story later. To be continued, the Infanta and I are getting in the last car left on the island. The character of Almondine, a record producer, is picking us up in a rowboat at daybreak. I can't tell you where we're going because we don't know. We are intersomnia between one dream and the next. I'm sorry I'm in such a dementia pandemiosis, but I've been in a K-hole since 86. We'll catch up with you later. 